Japan has changed a lot in only the past few months once again. Now that we are past the hottest months of the year and typhoon season is behind us, we can finally breathe a sigh of relief and welcome the cooler weather, which is good for all you lucky tourists who will arrive during this time of year. However, there are still plenty of recent updates and new things you need to know about in order to make your upcoming trip to Japan an unforgettable adventure rather than an unforgettable nightmare. Updates like potentially delayed fall colors, additional solutions to the Suica car dilemma, and inflation driving prices up for both residents and tourists alike are just a few of the many things you need to know before arriving in Japan. So what are we waiting for? Let's dive right into it. To kick this video off on a positive note, however, I'm going to start out with some good news. In the past few months, JR East has experienced quite the unique dilemma, as they have had to cancel issuing out new Suica and Pasmo cards all together due to a chip shortage. And for the past few months, their temporary solution to the problem was to advertise the Pasmo Passport and Welcome Suica card as the main option for tourists to use. And for the most part, these cards have been a decent solution, providing tourists with a temporary IC card that can be used just like a normal Suica or Pasmo card. If you want a full recap on how to get these cards, then check out my previous videos where I go much more in depth on the matter. But the main problem to these temporary solutions is just that, they're temporary. After 28 days, these cards expire, leaving you without an IC card to navigate Japan with ease. But because I have a great contributor to this channel, I can happily share and confirm a great solution until the Suica and Pasmo cards come back into rotation. As of right now, the Toika card, which is the IC card from the Nagoya region of Japan, is available in Tokyo, which I can confirm, as you can see, right here. Curious as to why I have two of these cards right now? Well, you'll see why in just a bit. This card essentially functions the exact same as the Suica and Pasmo card, with the only real difference being its design and origin. And just like the normal Suica and Pasmo card, the Toika card will never expire, so you don't have to worry about it turning off in 28 days like the Pasmo Passport and Welcome Suica card. The only downside about this card is as of right now, there are only two specific locations in the Tokyo area where you can get it right now. The first is located at Tokyo Station, which you'll find in the northern ticketing area, which looks like this and is pretty easy to spot. The other location you can pick up the Toika card is at Shinagawa Station. Just look for the north exit of the Shinkansen section of Shinagawa Station, which looks like this, and you'll be all set. And just like finding these ticket offices, acquiring your own Toika card is just as easy. All you need to do is go inside the ticket office, head to the counter with the light blue Toika sign hanging over head and ask for your Toika card. And that's pretty much it. At the time we recorded this, the cost for one Toika card was about 2,000 yen, but that was so they could get the 500 yen deposit on the card and then use the other 1,500 towards charging the card for train use. If you still have any questions about this card or how you can get it, please don't hesitate to join the Discord server and ask the community directly or put your question in the comments section below. Also, I wanted to give a special shout out to that great contributor I was talking about who goes by the name of Peso. He has been one of the top contributors to this channel since I was only at a few hundred subscribers. So again, I wanted to give a special shout out to you, man. Thank you as always. And that goes for all of you as well. If you think you have a great tip and want to share it with everyone, feel free to do so in the comment section below or post it in the Discord community server. I really do read all the comments and eventually reply to all of them. And if I think your comment is useful enough, then I might post it in one of my future videos just like I did for Peso. All right, now let's move on to something that shouldn't be too big of a concern, but it's something you definitely need to keep a close eye out for when you're planning your trip to Japan. As the government strides forward with its living with COVID policy, the emphasis has shifted to a more normal way of living and loosening virus-related restrictions. And while this signifies a positive shift towards normalcy, there have been some emerging challenges, particularly in the realm of online reservations. The surge in travel across Japan, driven by both residents and visitors, is creating a statistical inevitability of issues cropping up with some of these problems stemming from simple missteps in the reservation process. For instance, there have been an increase in cases of customers seeking refunds for hotel cancellations, but not realizing there was a 100% cancellation fee, making their refund requests impossible. Similarly, there have been reports where customers wanted to cancel a bundled flight and hotel reservation made through a third-party website. However, when they tried to get their refund, they were met with issues because either the flight or the hotel
hotel reservation turned out to be non-refundable. The lesson here, while simple, is still very important for you to keep in mind as you plan your trip to Japan. Make sure you scrutinize cancellation and rebooking policies, whether it be for flights, hotels, or any other reservation. This caution is especially crucial when utilizing third-party apps. Each entity involved, be it the hotel, airline, or third-party app, may have its own distinct refund policy, which could potentially convolute the whole refunding process should you decide to change your plans. Beyond the terms and conditions for cancellation policies, booking your hotel well in advance could also prove to be a smart move, as it will add an extra layer of reassurance to your travel plans. And if you haven't booked your hotel yet and you're traveling to Japan in the next few months, you will probably be compelled to book your hotels after you hear this next important piece of news. According to Kyoto News, tourists returned to Tokyo in droves, with Japan's visitor count reaching 85% of pre-pandemic levels. And I mentioned Tokyo specifically for a reason. Because according to a recent study, it seems the majority of tourists are just staying in Tokyo rather than going out and seeing what the rest of Japan has to offer. According to an article by Nikkei Asia, even though tourism levels haven't hit pre-pandemic levels just yet, their booking rates and hotel stays for Tokyo have certainly surpassed those levels, with 56.2% more tourists staying in Tokyo than before the pandemic struck. And when compared to other cities in Japan, these numbers don't come anywhere close to Tokyo. Osaka and Kyoto only saw slight increases to their hotel stays compared to pre-pandemic tourism, and even famous areas like Okinawa and Hokkaido saw drastic drops from their 2019 levels. So as I have mentioned time and again, if you want to get a good deal for a hotel in Tokyo or Japan, or have a lot of options to choose from, then you need to book it sooner rather than later. The longer you wait, the less options you'll have as your trip gets closer, which could force you to pay much more for a decent hotel than you would have liked to. And while it isn't too big of a deal for solo travelers, if you're staying with four or more people, you will definitely need to book your stays much longer in advance. While there are definitely some growing pains with Japan finally getting over COVID, there is some other good news related to COVID that I can happily share with you. The mask situation in Japan has drastically improved within the span of only a year. Only a few months ago, the majority of Japan was still wearing masks for pretty much anything, even though the government had eased their guidelines for masks drastically back in March. But as the extreme summer heat started to roll in, it seems that more and more masks came off, which I can definitely understand because it was an extremely hot and uncomfortable summer this year. But I don't think it was just the heat, as I have already mentioned that the people of Japan and seem to be finally getting used to a life with COVID rather than living a life in fear of it. I have even seen plenty of elderly people ditching their masks, choosing to breathe that fresh air once again. The only place I have really seen masks still get heavily worn was around hospitals or other areas with potentially vulnerable people. So with all this good news, you can finally breathe a sigh of relief as you will no longer have to worry about bringing a mask to Japan or wearing one. Remember how I mentioned that Japan experienced an excruciatingly hot summer? Well, it seems these effects are still lingering even as we go into the fall. A recent article from the Mainichi claims there is a chance that the fall colors will be delayed because the country is taking longer to cool off than expected. Because of this uncharacteristically hot summer, Hokkaido, which is one of the first areas of Japan to see their leaves change color, has yet to see it happen. And while Hokkaido is quite the distance away from the Tokyo area, there is always a chance that this delay in color change could affect the mainland as well. For now, the timetables for when each area of Japan will have their fall colors on full display have been released. But if it seems like there will be a delay in the fall colors because of that longer than usual summer, you can be sure you'll hear from me as soon as I get that update. Unfortunately, the time has finally come for the inevitable JR Pass price increase. As of October 1st, 2023, the legendary JR Pass was given a massive price hike. Now, the once perfect pass to see the golden triangle of Japan is no longer viable, as the new prices come nowhere close to justifying purchasing the JR Pass just to see Tokyo, Kyoto, and Osaka. While the initial thought for the price increase was because of inflation and high operating costs, over the past few months, it has become more clear that there might have been a bigger motive behind this change. In my recent videos, I have covered the fact that Japan's three major cities, Tokyo, Kyoto, and Osaka, have been experiencing some serious overcrowding issues with part of this issue
issue being attributed to the JR Pass and its ease of access between all three cities. Now, with the major price hike in effect, it might be a move to try and get tourists to use the pass to either travel farther out in Japan to get their money's worth or to abandon their plans of visiting the Golden Triangle. Whether this will actually have an effect on tourists exploring the Golden Triangle remains to be seen since this JR Pass price hike just took effect. Not only that, but because you have 90 days to redeem this pass, there have been plenty of smart tourists that took advantage of this grace period and bought their passes before the price hike. So we might not see a big change in visitors traveling the Golden Triangle until early next year. Either way, I will be keeping a close eye for any big updates on the JR Pass, whether it be more price changes based on demand, any added benefits to the pass because of this price increase, and more. But unfortunately, this isn't the only bad news I have for you when it comes to rail passes. The JR Pass isn't the only rail pass getting this price hike, as the rest of Japan's special rail passes got a slight price bump as well. On the same day the JR Pass had its price hike, the regional passes simultaneously followed suit, with their prices rising anywhere from 20 to 50%. And while some passes didn't see that much of a rise, like the Kyushu and Hokkaido Rail Pass, the most popular ones, like the Tohoku and Tokyo Pass, went up a full 50%. While the price hikes for the regional passes might be a little frustrating, at least these seem like they were a little more calculated when they changed their price. And if you plan your itineraries around some of these regional passes, you can definitely get your money's worth out of them still. For example, with the Tohoku Pass, you can pretty much explore all the most popular areas of mainland Japan that is north of Tokyo. And even if you only use the Tohoku Pass for one round trip ticket, for example, from Tokyo to Yamagata and back, you will have already almost gotten your money's worth for the pass. Or if you choose to go to Aomori and back, the pass will have paid for itself and then some. Either way, if you want to see if a regional pass or even the JR pass might still fit in your plans, here's a tip for you. Check out the Shinkansen calculator on Japan Guide. They have a pretty simple yet effective calculator that will show you whether a pass will be worth it or not based on where you're planning to go. Inflation in the weekend continues to hit Japan hard, causing more than just the JR pass to skyrocket in price. Just a few days ago, at the beginning of October, over 4,500 essential items across the country experienced big price hikes. These items include basic household foods, from olive oil and packaged meats to even liquor and alcohol products. And you might be asking yourself, Alex, why do I need to know anything about these household goods going up in price? I don't even live here. Well, if you think about it, if all these food items and alcoholic beverages are going up in price, you can bet that this same cost will be felt on restaurants and bar owners across the country. And as the price of these essential food items continue to rise, you can expect to see prices at bars, restaurants, and even hotels go up as well. And even though the weekend is still going to be a big help for tourists coming from Western countries, this constant rise in prices and inflation is going to have an impact on your vacation. For example, if prices for processed meat are going to rise 20%, even if only half of that price increase is carried over to the customer at a restaurant, that is going to be a 10% price increase. And if you add 10% to your overall food cost in Japan, you can start to see how inflation can take a toll despite the weak yen. So make sure you take that into consideration as you plan your trip to Japan. While these basic household goods might have an indirect impact on your wallet, this next piece of news will have a direct impact on your wallet, especially if you're a Disney lover. Basic household goods aren't the only thing seeing a price hike, as even famous theme parks are being forced to raise prices as well. As a result of the weak yen and rising inflation, Disney has increased its day pass from 9,400 yen to 10,900 yen. And while this 16% price increase might not seem like a big deal at first, the bigger issue to worry about is that other major theme parks might be forced to increase their prices as well. Other tourist favorites like Nintendo World, Universal Studios, and even the new Harry Potter Studios in Tokyo might follow Disney's lead and raise their prices as well. For now though, this is just speculation, but if it does unfortunately become a reality, you'll be sure to hear it from me as soon as those updates become available. Like the video if you found it useful, subscribe for more content about Japan, and check out the affiliate links in the description below for when you plan your next trip to Japan. Well, that's going to do it for
for now, and until then, I'll see you next time.